I know you want it. You know you want it. Updated Flashpunk tutorial working with the newest version of Flashpunk and the newest version of Ogmo Editor. Let's get started. Get to the repo in the link, download the tag for the tutorial start. Now, before we start messing with stuff, let's go ahead and uh, see what we have currently. So I made a, a little game, but I don't have levels for it. I want to use Ogmo to create levels. Right now, all I have is this uh, crazy little plane. He flies around, and you can rotate the screen so it's like a dodgy thing. And when you hit a wall, it blows up. So it's good to first take a look at the source code. I made sure to put links in the source code for both the exact commit of Flashpunk that I used so people don't have an issue with it and uh, where to get Ogma. So start it up, make a new game world. A is where I hold all of my assets. So you can see I've got an asset for the player currently um, and an asset for the background currently. So two pictures right now. C is my constants. I set the width and height of the game window. Uh, I use that for the rotating and positioning and whatnot. The game world is where uh, all the world logic happens. And you can see that game world takes um, map data. So it's all fleshed out. All we have to do all the way down at the bottom is add the map creation code right here. So this is what we're going to be doing with Ogmo and Flashpunk. And player, of course, handles all the cool player stuff, makes them flip and fly around blows up on things, etc. So to get started, let's open up Ogmo. Now you'll notice that this is the newest version, 2.1.0.2, September 19th, 2012. So we basically need to make a brand new project here. So this is not an exciting project yet. We're going to spice it up. The first thing that we need to do is project edit project. I take that back, I've already done goofed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna close this project. This was a previously opened project that I cleverly named new project to fool myself in the future, which it worked past me, way to go. I'm gonna make a brand new project. It's gonna ask us where we wanna save it. So we've got a thing in here somewhere Ogmo Dash, uh, find wherever your repo is stored. And we're going to store the project in a folder I've, t I've named Levels. And we'll just name it Ogmo Dash. For consistency's sake. Now, let's name it something that we can read in the sidebar so we don't think that it's a brand new project. And we'll go ahead and set up what looks good to us. So maybe a nice dark color for the background, grid color, probably not all the way black. Let's go something cool like that. Now, these levels are big. So by default, let's do 1024. Now this will change based on your project. Minimum will be 512, I guess. The maximum will do now what's 4096. All right, so that's going to get our level size in there. We'll go ahead and apply that. But now we still have a couple more properties that we have, but you'll notice that it gave us a big old blank world. So let's go back to our project. Now, layers is uh, the, the key part to, to the Ogmo editor. So we'll create a new layer. We'll call this collision or walls or grid or whatever you'd like to name it. We'll actually name it grid. And our game works on a 32 by 32 grid. Make sure that the type is grid. And we'll do white. Now, here's the different export modes. We're going to be working with bit strings in this tutorial, so just leave it there. So now we have a grid. That's all well and good. So we can go in here with our rectangle tool. We can draw a bunch of tiles, cut them out. Um, that's your standard graphic editing. So that's a, pretty, that's a pretty sweet world we got there. Maybe like fangs or something. I don't know. This part's tricky for the player to get through right there. 
So now how do we add our player start? Where does the player begin? Well, we're going to have to edit our project again. Now it's going to fuss about an unsaved level whenever you edit the project. So yeah, we'll still edit it. We don't care. We didn't make any changes there that we really need to save. So we want to go into entities and we'll add a new entity. So we'll name it player start. And we want to limit it to one. That means that we can only ever have one of these in the map. This is where the player starts. So set the size to be 32 by 32. The origin, since our player is kind of centered in the middle, we'll go ahead and set his origin to be in the middle. And he is not resizable, but he is rotatable. And we can only rotate in increments of 90 degrees. Now, by default, Ogmo will just draw you a nice little rectangle there, but we actually have that image file. So we'll go ahead and find it. It's in our assets folder, player. Boosh, skadoosh. We don't want to tile it. It's just a picture of a dude. We'll hit apply there. Nope, we don't want to apply yet. So we have our player start created. So now go back into layers. We need to create a brand new layer. This will be for our entities. So name it entities. I'm, I'm clever like that. Now we're going to go on a smaller grid, eight by eight. So we have more minute positioning of our entities in our world. So for our grid, that's just standard collision and our entities are going to be actually, you know, we can position those more granularly. Type, you guessed it, tiles. No, that's wrong. It's entities. And this should do it for the setup of this. So we'll hit apply. Now you see uh, over here we have two different options. We have grid and we have entities. So we'll go ahead and make a level again. We want a nice thick border so the player can't get outside of the world. Now this level will start in He'll come out of like a, a little shoot here. He's in this room. He's got to get out. All right, once he gets out of the world, then he's got a couple different paths to get to. That one's obviously more challenging than that one. And he finishes up right here. So now we need to place our player. So we have the player start, select him. We can zoom in here for more precise control, but you'll notice the grid got smaller when I switched to entities. So now we can place the player anywhere. So let's go ahead and set him there. Well, what if we want a second player start? Remember how we set the, the limit to one? If we place another one, you'll notice that it disappears from the last place it was. Now also we set our player to be rotatable. So we can change the angle here. Now keep in mind that the player's position is from the center of wherever you place him here. So even if you type in 90, it doesn't quite rotate properly. Uh, in this version of Ogmo Editor, it's a known issue. But it will spawn from the center of that yellow thing. This is just showing you which way he's going to be facing. But we don't want him to be facing down over there. We want him to be facing right there with a zero angle. So that's, that's a pretty sweet level, I think, in my opinion. I don't know. I made it, so I'm kind of biased. So we'll go ahead and save that level as tutorial.oel. means Ogmo Editor Level. Save it out. So now we have a level done. That was pretty painless, right, guys? Now let's go in and implement this in Flash. Keep in mind that we're just working with a basic grid layer here. We aren't going into any tile maps or anything like that. Now you'll notice in game world, we're actually doing some weird stuff with the in game world. We're doing weird stuff with the grid. You notice how we don't have any kind of image or tile sets. We just have an entity for the map right here. And you'll notice that we are creating a map image based on the data of our map grid since it's just stored as a bitmap data. And then we scale it up to 32. So all we're seeing is the raw bitmap data of our grid. Grids are masks and they are used for collision only. So we're kind of tricking it here. So we can go ahead, game world expects a map data. So the first thing that we need to do is actually add that map data to our assets. So we'll create a new 
in our project browser over here, levels, see that we have tutorial.oel. This is our level file. In Flash Develop, it's as easy as right click, generate embed code. If you're not in Flash Develop, just type that shit in. We're going to make this public, static, constant, because we don't want people changing this. We'll name it level. And it's going to be a class. Let's go ahead and comment it for good practice. Also, so we know what it is later. Now, in the entry class, Ogmo Dash, you see that we're calling a new game world. So right now, we want to pass that our level, a.level. So in game world, it expects map data. If we don't have map data, then it just creates a debug map. You saw that previously. But if we do have map data, we're going to go to load map. So let's check that out. It's at the bottom of this class. To do, add map creation code. Well, let's do that. The first thing we want, keep in mind that an OEL file, an Ogmo editor level file, is basically just raw XML. Here, I'll go ahead and open it for you. So that's beautiful, right? You see, got a level. Grid was the name that we named our grid layer and a big old hunk of mess here. And then entities, we named that second layer entities and one of our entities was named player start. So it's all contained within here. So go back to game world. So the first thing we need to do is get an XML representation of the bitmap or of the binary string that we import into our assets. We can do this by var map XML or whatever you would like to name your map. It's going to be an XML object. Now, Flashpunk has great built-in XML parsing. So we'll do fp.getXML. Now, what does this do? It loads the file as an XML object. Well, we have a file right up that thing's alley. It's called map data. Give that the business. So now, map XML is an XML representation of our map data. What do we need to do now? Let's actually create that grid. So if you've messed with XML and ActionScript 3, it uses the E4X. I'm not going to go into that very much, but I will show you the syntax here. So we're going to create our grid like we'd create any grid. Map grid. That's a new grid. So the width, well, we want to parse that from our XML. It's a uint, and it'll be map XML dot the property width. Are, are you sure? Well, let's check. In the root node, which is level, we have a property width. Right now it's a string, we turn that into a uint. Problem solved. Height, N another tricky one. Another uint, and that'll be map XML. The property of that root tag, height. Again, we can verify. Looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and tear this off and put this here so we can have better visibility. So now we expect the tile width, tile height, and then the X and Y location. So we know that our tiles are 32 by 32, and we want the grid to be at zero, zero. Done and done. So now that we've created our grid, how do we get all these ones and zeros into this grid? Well, again, Flashpoint makes it Stupidly easy. Let's go map grid dot load from string. It loads the grid data from a string. Well, it turns out that we have a bit string given to us by Ogmo. Thanks, Matt Thorson. So the string, well, that's going to be, we don't necessarily have to cast it as a string here since it already is a string, but it's not hurting anything. Map XML dot grid. And since grid is the node itself, it's going to give us all the data within these brackets. So that's our string. Now, what separates each column? Absolutely nothing. So we're going to do blank string. And what separates our rows? Well, that would be a new line. So we escape a new line. So theoretically, that should load our map in. But remember, we have to set up our player or else it's not gonna be fun, it'll just be a map that you can't play, it's dumb. I didn't make a dumb level game, so we're gonna fix this up. 
Create a player at the player start. Old player, we already have him in here. I'm gonna create a new player. So what do you want? X location. That's an integer. Now let's check this Ogmo file here. It looks like our player start is at entities player start. All right. So map XML dot entities dot player start. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy this because we're gonna use this in the future. We want the value x. Easy peasy, cat and cheesy. I have no idea what that means. So now we need the y location. We've already covered this. So dot. I just pasted in what I had because I knew that I was going to use it again. Now we need the angle. It just so happens that we're storing the angle here since we checked is rotatable for our player start entity. So in case we set a different angle, we want to be able to represent that here. Dot angle. And we aren't going to mess with the speed for right now. The speed will be default 200. You, you did it. You're done. With four lines of actual code, uh, it looks to be that we've imported this properly. Now let's go ahead and check it out. I do declare that we are playing this level. This level looks familiar, right? Here's the tricky bit. Whoa, there we go. You made it through now. We've got to figure out how to get out of this place. Maybe flip over this way, up around. Is it this way? No, because we put it over here. And yay, we win. But there's no win condition, so we lose. And um, that's life. You can't ever win. So that's the basics of... Working with Ogmo, keep in mind that we only worked with grids. Grids are mask types in Flashpunk, and they are made to handle collision. We covered how to make a grid. We covered how to make entities in Ogmo, how to place them, how to set properties on them. So next time, we'll look into tile sets and more cosmetic things, because although this has a cool style, it's, it's, eh, it's, it's nothing special. So again, feel free to download the source code. I'm Zachary Lewis. And uh, happy punkin', y'all.